In genetic engineering are essential for some methods as electrophoresis or the preparation of cultures. In this practice, our aim is to make different solutions that will be used in future practices and to familiarize the diverse units that exist with several calculations. Also, to make into account different considerations that some solutions need. Solutions are homogeneous mixes which are compound of two or more pure substances. These substances are commonly known as the solute and the solvent. The solute is the substance that is dissolved in the solvent and it is found in the small quantities while the solvent is found in large quantities. According to some characteristics, solutions can be classified into various types such as solvent aggregation state solutions which include solid, liquid and gas state for the solvent in the solutions. Total charge which includes electrolyte solutions and non-electrolyte solutions Another characteristic to consider when classifying solutions is concentration. Concentration is the maximum amount of dissolution of a solvent into a solution. There are several types of these concentrations such as unsaturated, saturated and oversaturated. There are some steps to make any solutions and these are Select the solution and analyze the quantity that is needed. Make sure to follow the protocol of the reagent that is going to be used. Calculate the amount of reagent depending on the final volume. If it's necessary, adjust the pH. Gauge in a conic tube or in a test tube. Take the measure of the reagent. Dissolve the solute in the solvent and make sure to have an homogenized mixture. And finally, label the solutions with date, the content and concentration. To verify the correct preparation of a solution, a titulation is needed. This procedure consists in knowing the concentration of a substance from another substance, which concentration is known using a chemical indicator. For example, if the concentration of a solution of sodium hydroxide that it's a base wants to be known, then an acid like hydrochloric acid is required to the titulation and with a chemical indicator like orange of methyl, the equilibrium point can be known. For the first solution, we create three 5 milliliters of a good blue molar molar. For these, we use like a molar formula. And we get the mass of the glucose we're going to put in the solution. We follow this standard particle for solution preparation, and in this specific solution, is going to be sterilized. For the second solution, we create 70 milliliters of blue material to be 15%. For this we use like the relation between volume and here 15 15 percent or 50 milliliters of user in 100 milliliters of solution and then we just adjust to the 17 for 17 getting this volume of glycerol and for this preparation we follow the standard protocol and we have to use conical tubes to measure glycerol and we can't pipette it and here we also use like the molar formula to get the mass of the calcium chloride to put on the solution. And here we follow the protocol standard for the solution preferred. And but in here we use the magnetic steer. For this solution, we're going to prepare 35 milliliters of calcium chloride 0.1 molar, but it also has to be glycerol at 15%. So we start measuring the solids, in this case the calcium chloride, which has a molar weight. Uh, for this, we're going to multiply the concentration that it needs to be by the volume that we're looking for. And finally, we are going to obtain the grams using the molecular weight. In this case, we need to use 0.38 grams of 
like calcium chloride. For the glycerol part, we are going to use 50%, but we only need 35 milliliters. So the final result will be 5.25 milliliters of glycerol. And because it is liquid, we need to adjust the residual volume with this liter water. Finally, because it is a liquid, we need to adjust the volume. So we are going to make the calculation and the rest is going to be this liter water. So it is 29.75. Five milliliters. For the next solution, we're going to prepare 100 at one mole, mole one molar concentration. And this solution, in particular, needs to have a pH adjustment to eight. So for this, we're going to use chloric acid. But first, we're going to calculate how many grams of trees we need to prepare the solution. So here we have the calculations. It is made with the standard protocol that we've been using for the for the previous solutions, and we get this mass of trees. These grams are going to be diluted in 100 milliliters of distilled water, and the pH is going to be adjusted using this using this chloric acid solution. For this, we use the potentiometer in which we put the solution prepared in a beaker, and we put the potentiometer and we start drops of chloric acid until we get the pH desired. For the final solution we are going to prepare a milliliters of EDTA at 0.5 molar concentration. It also needs a pH adjustment to 8. In this case EDTA has this molecular weight so for the mass we are going to use we follow the same protocol we've been using. We use the molar formula, so we multiply the <coughs> concentration for the volume and the molecular weight. And we're going to add 14.6 grams of EDTA to 100 milliliters of distillated water. To adjust the pH in this solution, we're going to use sodium hydroxide at 5 molar concentration. In activity 1, all the calculations were made in order to know the concentration of the solution and prepare them correctly. For that, different concentration equations were used, for example, molarity, normality, among others. And for activity 2, calculations were made in order to know the mass and the volumes to prepare the cultural mediums, depending the number of petri dishes used. The importance of the different types of concentration is that the compounds required to make these solutions can vary depending on their state or in the unit in, in which the reagents are found. Additionally, the application of the solution determines which concentration to use. For example, if a solvent is solid, like zinc, molality is used. When if the solvent is liquid, such as water, molarity is used. In the same way, percentage concentrations are used and are based whether or not you have to measure the volume or weight of both the sodium and the solvent, depending on the final concentration. Normality is used when solutions of acids or bases have to be made, and dependent of, on the amount of protons that must yield or accept in the reaction that will take place. Normality is useful when the solution will be used in titration, since the solutions of the same normality will neutralize each other at the same volume. Parts per million are used when you have to use compounds in extremely small amounts, such as trace elements from unpurified water. And X concentrated solutions are used when you are going to employ a solution lock, such as when preparing buffer solutions for electrophoresis, which can be diluted each time they are required, instead of preparing multiple solutions every time. Many considerations must be taken into account when preparing a solution to ensure it will work effectively. An important detail is to know if the solution needs a pH adjustment, in which case it is necessary to leave sufficient volume to adjust it without exceeding the total volume. When preparing a tree solution, the reactant must be the one with the closest pH to the desired one to avoid exceeding the final volume when adjusting it. 
It's also important to mention that pH adjustments must be made with a conjugate acid or base to the one in the solution to ensure the properties remain unchanged. Another important aspect is to know the properties of the reagent, since in some cases, such as glycerol, you cannot do the normal piping because of its density and viscosity. It requires other techniques, such as reverse piping. Some solutes, such as sodium acetate, need heat to dissolve and many require constant, constant stirring. For some solutions, it's important to use water that has not been distilled but that has a molecular biology grade, such as milliq water. This is the case for solutions such as the loading buffer, which will come in contact with nucleic acids to avoid its degradation due to the presence of nucleates or salts in the water. It's also important to mention that the loading buffer as well as the SDS solution cannot be sterilized because of its components. This is also the case for antibiotics in culture media, which should be added after sterilization to avoid the degradation of its components. In the case of the SOC medium, it's important to prepare the salt solutions and the glucose solutions as stocks separately and add them after the medium has been sterilized in the autoclave to prevent degradation of any of these components. It's also necessary to take into account that some solutions must be prepared in a specific order. This is the case of the TBE or TAE buffers, where the first component to be added is the trees, then the EDTA, and finally the acid. This is because EDTA can only solubilize when the solution has a basic pH. Finally, some safety precautions must be taken when handling components. For example, SDS is very irritable and tends to form dust, so it should be handled correctly. In the case of highly concentrated acid solutions, such as the ones used for pH adjustment, they should be measured and handled in an extraction hood. This is to avoid aspirating any of the harmful fumes. This is also the case for other toxic components such as phenol. If any of these considerations are not taken into account, it can cause different consequences. For example, using a higher concentration of agar in a culture medium might impact the ability of a microorganism to grow. If a phenol chloroform isoamyl alcohol solution is not prepared correctly, it might cause the proteins from a sample to not separate correctly, causing interference when doing a nucleic acid extraction. Another example is when preparing loading buffers. The concentration of any of the colorants must be measured exactly to ensure that you'll be able to see the running bands when doing an electrophoresis. Finally, as mentioned previously, the materials which cannot be sterilized by autoclaving must be taken into account to avoid degradation of the components. The correct preparation of solutions not depends only on the calculations made but also on some considerations for each solution that is going to be made, like the properties of the solute and the solvent, such as the phase state, molecular weight, density, the pH of the solution, and the order of regions to be mixed. An incorrect preparation of solutions may lead to unexpected results in further practices.